What's going on everybody? Welcome to another edition of Axe Creation. And in this week's lesson, we bust out our seven strings and we look at some drop A chord voicings. So as usual here, I want to give you a slightly different perspective on how to approach some chords when exploring drop A. Okay, so for this lesson we will be on a 7 string and that low 7 string will be tuned down one step to a drop A. Just like a drop D except you're doing it on your low string. Okay, and again if you want a, the tabs, a copy of the PDF or Guitar Pro down in the description below. Okay, so we are in a drop A tuning and there's a couple of different ways I could have approached this lesson, but again, I just wanted to give you some big, thick chords. We have a nice ambient, kind of clean tone setting going on. So let's just run through the chords really fast. All right, we have this chord. Kind of a, a sus, a sus chord. Second chord is going to be the same chord. So two out of the four are identical. Move it up to the third fret. Play it there. Here's that third chord. Nice dark, ambient, tension filled chord. Ominous. And then we're gonna go to this chord. Still sounds dark and ominous, but it's really just the seventh chord. Okay? So now let's talk about this. How do we come up with these chords? Is that we know so many fifth string rooted chords, right? So meaning chords. We have our major chord, or we have our minor chord, or we have some sus. Whatever chords you know that are rooted here on the on our fifth string, we can, we can play these chords, right? So now you can take whatever your fifth string root and just drop it down an octave, and you get this really wide spacing voice. Like this would be a C major seven chord. I can do a little shell voicing of it, take out the fifth, you get a really nice open sound. Well, and then I can take this root note on my fifth string and just drop it down to the seventh string. And have a nice, really wide space chord. Sounds really nice. So that's kind of the idea for the first two chords. We were taking this A sus chord. Right? Open five, two, two, open one. I'm sorry. Open two, open one. And then all we're doing is putting the low strings underneath that. Okay, now I have another lesson and I did a long time ago, I was talking about creating lush chords and all these things and what we did was basically take these two little simple power chords or dyads, different shapes of two chords, and move them around with our open A string. You know, so one cheap way to get some really cool sounds is just to drone out the open A. So we have this A sus, right? Big Petrucci kind of chords. Sound good with distortion. Right? And your typical sus chord that you find. A lot of us will play. They will add that six string down there. Three three five five three three. Well, because of the drop tuning, you just drop it down. Get that third fret down there. And you have this obnoxiously thick suspended chord. It sounds great. So let's move that down a step to the second fret and we're going to change the chord a little bit. We're going to basically put our ring finger where our pinky is, so four on the third string, and then our pinky is going to play five on our D string. Nice tension bass fill chord. I'm not going to get, I don't, I'm not too concerned with what the name of this chord is, right? It's essentially, if, if all of the other chords were sus chords, it's essentially just a sus chord, but you have this flat six or sharp five, depending on how you want to interpret that note. But that's the chord. You have it, um, this tritone is found within it between this note and that note, which is why it's tension. So if I take out this note right here, then the chord is just... It's fine. Alright, so as you go through and you try to incorporate that chord into your writing, that could be an idea to do it, where you're not just, bam, here's the chord, I'm picking it out and then putting in that, that note. 
okay? And then the second chord is essentially, if you're familiar with the Hendrix chord, right? This dominant sharp nine chord and the name is irrelevant, but this shape, if I take that note out, that I reel that color tone out, now I just have this little shell voicing. And that's movable. So I put it down in open position, I get this chord, 101. Oh, well I can put here, it's a, now it's a dominant 9. And then I get that E. And again, I'm not too concerned with naming these chords. It's irrelevant for, because you can use these chords as texture and ambience and just color palettes rather than functioning harmonic entities, right? But, we can take the root note of that chord and put it down on the 1. Nice big chord, okay. And technically, it's I think it's a B flat nine sharp eleven chord, okay. But either way, it's just a darker chord. Fool's intention, this sounds good. And I like this kind of progression because one, these chords are kind of ambiguous because they're sus chords. We're kind of blurring the harmony, if you will. It's ambiguous. So I like that, and I also like the fact that the root notes of these chords, or at least the bass note of these chords. Just move down, O, oh, three, two, one. All right. So if any of you are metal players out there, you know you can spend your days just playing heavy riffs on open one, two, and three, and you'll be fine. It doesn't really matter what scale you're playing. So this injects the nice that kind of motion into it, which is fun. A little harmonic movement, chromatic line. You can change that last chord around, you don't have to end it on that one. You can do other tension chords. Like I said, I pointed out this Hendrix chord before. So again, that root note is on the fifth string. So guess what? I can just do that. Now I have that low chord. I can just play the power chord on it a la Periphery or somebody, will let, they'll do similar ideas, we'll just play the power chord underneath a bigger chord. Right? If I do it on the 6th fret, I get this tension sound. Mixing in the overtures up there. I can do it on 7, which has a little bit more of a traditional flavor, going back to the A, it resolves kind of nicely. Seven is the dominant. It doesn't matter. No, we're not talking about that. Big ambient chords. Seven string chords. All right. So dial in those clean, spanky tones and play for days because I can just live in that saturation. It's so much fun. Just be careful though because when you're playing with a lot of delay and reverb and you start, at, you know, actively strumming it, putting some more rhythm into it, you kind of get lost or washed out. The same way that if you're playing chords like this with a ton of distortion, sometimes the clarity or the, the notes are going to get lost a little bit. Give and take, everybody. Give and take. So like I said, t uh, tabs, PDF, and Guitar Pro down in the description below. And as always, let me know what you come up with. So until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.